What you've all been waiting for, my election forecast. All right, and I think I got this pretty down. There's two kind of ways to look at this. I'm going to go with what my my gut, my heart tells me, what my heart tells me. And this is a depressed heart, not going to lie. I think Kamala's going to win. I think she's going to win uh, very close. It's going to be 276 to 262. So the CNN, you got the, or ABC has got the interactive uh, map, and you can change, you know, a state if you want. Um, and I think what's going to happen here is Trump's going to take Georgia and Trump will get back Arizona, but he'll lose Nevada. And it's, I mean, he'll, he'll, he won't be able to get enough flips. He'll get two flips, Arizona and Georgia, but he won't be able to get Nevada, won't be able to get any of these states and Pennsylvania particularly. And because of that, he'll lose. Now, I, theoretically, if he got New Hampshire and he got Nevada, he's winning without taking Pennsylvania. I don't see that happening, though. So I think this is where it's going to be. Uh, she'll retain Pennsylvania. She'll retain these guys. The blue, uh, the upper northwest, uh, big Midwest, and she'll retain Nevada. And as such, even if Trump gets two, he won't win. And he's got to get three, at least three flips. Even if he were to flip Arizona, uh, Nevada, and Georgia, which is a pretty good possibility, uh, Kamala still winning two seventy two sixty eight. Uh, it's just all there is to it. So I don't think that I don't. I, I just look. I've we put a lot of hope in Nevada for many years. I know we got a Republican governor there, but Nevada's always just been that close, and yet never. It's always like a chasing a dragon for heroin addicts. You never catch the dragon. So I think that's what's going to happen. Now, if you if you were to, look, I hear people say, oh, no, and the reason is, I think it's, gonna be, it's basically a 50-50 country by and large. And I think it's close enough that the uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers are still in control of a couple places. You know, the Pittsburgh Steelers, man, they control Clark County, Dane County, whatever the county is, in Wayne County, they control the city of Philadelphia. Um, even though they still control Fulton County, I think we're going to, I think Trump's going to win going away. So they can't, you know, they can't Pittsburgh Steelers down there. So the Pittsburgh Steelers come around and they remember Trump only lost by 80,000 votes in Pennsylvania last time. So they don't have to come up with that much. That's it. They, they don't need to come up with that much in Clark County, Dane County or uh, Wayne County. They just need enough to turn the vote for Kamal. And I think they're going to get it because I think it's a, it was a pretty doggone close race. That's what my heart, my bleeding, bleeding heart tells me. It does. And it says we're going to still win the Senate. We, the good guys, the Republicans, because we're going to get, uh, we got West Virginia in the bag, probably got Montana in the bag. Montana looks like a pretty, I think Trump's going to win Ohio by six to seven. As such, he'll pull Bernie Moreno over there. So we'll win these three states, uh, Senate seats. So it'll be 52, 40, is it even said Senate on there? It'll be 52, 48, in my opinion, uh, for the Republicans in the Senate. And that look, look, it's good. We'll take it. I think we'll probably retain the House. But again, as I said before, I don't know enough what the gerrymandering has done to create you know these crazy districts. I just don't know. But I think we'll retain the House because I think the Republican vote will be very, very high relative to the Democrats. I think the, the popular vote will still go to Kamala. But generally speaking, I think the vote will be quite high in terms of where it was in 2020 in 2022 that the Democrats, I, I don't, I think we'll pick up seats in the House. I do. Again, I can't, I'm not all that confident in that, but I'm pretty confident simply because the, the, this is definitely more of a right wing, a right leaning vote this time than it was in 2022. And 2020 was just freaking insane. So I think we'll retain and gain some uh, seats in the House, which would be good. So I think we'll have the Congress outright, but I think Kamal will be the president. Now I want to share with you one thing. This is the, the true taste of what's going to happen. I'm going to show you here probably call this early the virginia 7th congressional district all right this is going to be like you got black fredericksburg culpepper uh, even going to north charlottesville um even on the, the shore there this is a key district and right now it's being represented by abigail spanberger and she almost lost in 2022 yeah 2022 but she pulled it out at the end all right if you know what i'm saying at the end uh, and we've had Republicans in there previously to that. So very interesting. This will be like 71% urban, 27% rural, all right? 50% uh, white, 20% black, basically 20% Hispanic, uh, another 10. So it's basically 50-50. It's a major, almost a majority-minority district, all right? And so this one right here is going to be the big, big one because she has represented this since 2018, the Democrat. And she almost lost one time. Now she's leaving to run for governor i think is what happened is so she's leaving so it's an open seat and so that open seats are much better for the uh the out of party uh, uh party to take it out of power party to take it back uh, we we vote for our incumbents like 95 percent of the time so very rarely do incumbents lose their, if they're if they're running for re-election so it's an open seat and that's a big big deal it's an open seat that is 50 50 basically white versus other graces and it's very tight, very tight. And it's been for the last, what, six cycles, I guess eight, four cycles or so, 
it's been very close. And the fact that she's leaving and it's open now, we're running against that clown Vindman. You know that guy, that lieutenant colonel, just just a scumbag, dude. He's a Democrat run against this guy, just a clown. I mean, this this is a Ukrainian national who's like, ah, oh, it's just he's a, not a good person. The Democrats love him because he's a whistleblower against Trump, and the guy's just a scumbag. And now it's, but that's going to be a key one. If the Republicans win this, hey, it's a pickup. In of itself, that won't be surprising. But if we can win going away, like in big numbers, that will tell you the mode, the mood of the electorate. And so the Virginia 7th is a big one. Keep your eyes on Virginia 7th. I'm telling you. And because it's a House race, uh, if the Republicans win going away, they'll be called pretty early. I'm telling you. So what happens in these political things? They always call. I have to tell you that, the, Eric, this is the congressional election that cost the Democrats their goal and the, the uh, Republican establishment their goal of massive amnesty. Because here's Eric Cantor. He was like the cat's me off the Republican Party, pushing amnesty, pushing amnesty. Dave Bratt, some unknown guy who's a college professor, economics professor, ran on a uh, shoestring budget and took him out in the primary. And then Dave Bratt won in 2014, 2016, then he lost in 2018. But he only lost, look at that, 50 to 48. Uh, look, 51 to 49, 2020. Right there, 52 to 48. And so this chick, the Republican, the incumbent, the Democrat, hasn't won going away. So if this guy who's running this year, look, and so they voted for Obama. They voted for Cuccinelli back in the, 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 for the governorship that Cuccinelli almost won. I know this guy, Mark Obenshane, real good guy. Obenshane's a good guy. Yeah, I like him. Uh, they voted for uh, Clinton, right? So you can see right there, they voted for uh, Tim Kaine. But they voted for Glenn Young. See how you got the, like, see how different it is there? I mean, it's, it's kind of blue, but it's kind of red at the same time. So that's a big one, man. If Republicans can take that, dude, that's going to show, especially take it by, like, say, four. That's going to be a huge win. And that's going to show you it's going to be a landslide for Trump. So if Virginia 7th comes back as a, just a massive shift for the Republicans, it's going to be a major landslide for Trump. Now, I can see actually that happen. I'm not going to lie to you. My, Gut tells me, I think it's going to be a Trump land side, but I'm not, I just can't believe, I just, I got to go with my heart. My heart says, I know I'm going to be disappointed. I know Kamala's going to win. But my gut tells me just the way some of these voters have come out, it's like this pre, uh, the, the uh, early voting numbers here that New Hampshire could go, Virginia could go. I mean, this is a Trump land side, Pennsylvania and Nevada. I'm not holding my breath for Wisconsin, Michigan. But if, if that goes, and Trump's, that's not a landslide, 304 to 234, but that could signif signif signify a serious win for Trump, where he might even win the popular vote, actually. I could see that happen easily. Not yeah, easily, but I could see that happen. I just can't, I can't go with it right now. But anyway, the reason I can't go with this guy, I just can't encourage myself to, to be optimistic. I could be pessimistic. It's just the nature of the beast, dude. And pessimistic is based on the reality of I don't think the Republicans have showed enough metal to deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I just don't. And when you're dealing with the Pittsburgh Steelers, you better have a guy who can stop the freaking, you know, the, uh, the uh, Rocky Blyer from uh, leading the way through the line with Franco Harris coming in behind. We just don't have that. And as such, I'm expecting a Kamala squeak, but Trump, uh, not Trump, but the Republicans win the Senate in the House. That's my prediction. Remember, but there's, oh, what, I think it was like 75% of the state legislatures are up to for elections. So that'd be huge, too. And the Republicans have like, like uh, four to three right now, or three to, I think it's four to three representation of state legislatures. I think the Republicans are going to pick up huge amounts of state legislature seats, too. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. But anyway, either way, there's nothing you can do about it. Don't freaking panic. Don't lose your mind. Don't go, don't sell all your, I mean, do whatever you got to do. But I'm going to sell my stuff. Ah, just stop. All right, love your thoughts. What do you think? Put it in the show notes, and we'll see you. God bless.